very much. Uh, we look forward to Dr. Vinay Nangya. Uh, you have been introduced, you were not there, so Thank I'm going to skip so that. Yeah. I mean, we're truly delighted to have you with us, sir. And uh, he is going to be talking on visual fields and OCT. You are ready, Rekna, for the choice of strategy and progression analysis. Um, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Chitra, and to the AIOS. I'm delighted to be here today. I'm going to take you through a very short presentation on the preferred practice patterns. And um, I was wondering what to write and what to talk to you, and I thought the best thing to do was to visit the consensus because there's a lot of effort that's gone into the consensus at the WGA, actually. And my contribution really is showing you what the consensus, how it applies practically to the photographs and the patients that I'm showing you, actually. So the clinical diagnosis of glaucoma is based on the detection of a thin retinal nerve fiber layer and a narrowed neuroretinal rim. And the thin retinal nerve fiber layer and neuroretinal rim are the current day gold standards, actually. So the diagnosis of glaucoma does not always require the detection of visual field defects, and that's just what we were discussing with regard to the preperimetric glaucoma. But perimetry is indispensable for documentation and monitoring of functional decline in glaucoma. So you can see here that this is a retinal nerve fiber layer defect that co you know, correlates with the retinal nerve fiber layer here. Imaging technologies including optical coherence tomography provide an objective and quantitative approach to detect. So of all the tech, you know, technologies that have come out, the OCT has really stood the test of time. And it is definitely the best currently available uh, you know, digital imaging instrument uh, for all glaucoma specialists for the structural damage in glaucoma. And RNFL thickness is the most clinically helpful parameter of the ones currently available with OCT. And um, again, you can see here the large patch, the broad patch of wedge here, retinal nerve fiber layer defect, and this you know, large wedge in the retinal nerve fiber layer that you can see here. But of course, we also have the macular ganglion cells, and it's a general impression that perhaps it's a good thing to do the, GS, uh, the GCL in the macula, so that then you're able to correlate the retinal nerve fiber layer with the GCL. And the GCL also gives you an impression almost like the perimetry in the central, you know, six to seven degrees that it covers, the deviation maps that it covers. So it gives you an impression and helps you correlate the two structural changes and further fortify your decision making, actually. But there are many pitfalls of OCT, and one of the most important is artifacts and false segmentation. And you know, this is a patient where really the retinal nerve fiber layer has bottomed out, and so you'll get segmentation errors, and you will not be able to follow up. So this is the time when you say the retinal nerve fiber layer is unlikely to be, you know, significantly helpful to you. The second photograph is that of a uh, of a ganglion cell uh, deviation map, and uh, the difficulty here is. Because of the structure of the fovea, you know, the central area, which is not supposed to have ganglion cells, has expanded a little bit. So that's got something to do with the foveal characteristics, the dimensions of the fovea, and then that causes difficulty in assessing uh, the deviation map, actually. That is something that we should remember. In myopic eyes, also, we have difficulty with the retinal nerve fiber layer, and you can see this photograph of a high myope with significant uh, retinoschisis, which is not uncommon in high myopic eyes, and then of course the segmentation is not going to be regular, and therefore you have difficulty with these patients actually. As far as the visual fields are concerned, we know, and, and my colleague uh, Dr. Suhasini has covered, that they should be reliable, defects should be reproducible and consistent with structural optic nerve damage, and the glaucoma hemifield test, the pattern standard deviation, these are all important for uh, the diagnosis of glaucoma. Standard white on white perimetry is fine, and you should do a central 24 degrees field or a 30 degrees field, and you should use the 10 2 strategy. Uh, and I will just come to you about uh, the 10 2. This is the 12 degree visual field that we, that we use on our octopus machine, and you can see uh, that this is just a central area, and, and it gives you an impression of how close the visual field loss has gone to the center of the fovea, and that's the importance actually. So this is again a 12 degree field and a 30 degree field and this, this tells you that when you do a 12 degree you're concentrating more on the central part of the macula and the importance is that we know that we're worried about the patient not losing central vision. We also know that about 50 to 60 percent retinal nerve fiber layer loss has already happened in patients that come to us with glaucoma uh, in our clinics. And we also know that often the first area to get damaged is the most vulnerable zone that's just below the macular segment and, and, and in between the macular segment and the inferior 
temporal segment actually and that then impinges straight on the ganglion cell layer in the central six degrees actually which is what this visual field covers and that's why we are now beginning to believe that that most patients or almost all patients with glaucoma should always have a central macular visual field in association with the 24 or 30 degree visual field actually. So with current technology detection of structural defects generally precedes detectable functional defects in glaucoma and you know of course this is not a classical example of that but just for structure functional correlation you can see the optic disc damage correlating with the retinal nerve fiber layer notch and this is the ganglion cell layer and you can see how closely it has come to the fovea this is the deviation map actually and then again at the 12 degree you can see how vividly it captures the the loss of visual field and how close it is to the fovea versus the 30 degree field that you see here actually and this is a patient that I had when we done multiple retinal nerve fiber layer values over a long period of time and you get this regression here that shows you how the deterioration of the retinal nerve fiber layer has taken place but every time that you do a retinal nerve fiber layer please make sure that the segmentation because the segmentation can change you know from one test to other actually therefore we will always look at the retinal nerve fiber layer here like this actually and uh, this is the Hoods report. I'm sure many of you know about it. It's, it's very, very, I think, important just to understand what this is all about. And uh, I may take just, maybe this is the last slide actually. So what it does is instead of having the nasal fibers here, it brings the macular fibers center. And that's very important actually, because you need to see the macular fibers because you're worried about the macular fibers because they serve central vision. And uh, it's also very important that uh, that uh, you know this is the uh, ganglion cell loss this is the deviation map so it flips the retina actually so what it's done is though the loss is inferior it's flipped the retina superior so the ganglion cell loss is appearing superiorly and it flips the retina so that it matches with the visual field loss because the superior visual field loss is related to inferior damage actually so this way you'll get the ganglion cell loss matching with the with the loss uh, of the visual field actually so they may uh, preferred practice patterns may differ depending on the patient and the practice and this is just a basic guideline that helps you meet the needs of appropriate treatment thank you so much thank you very much uh, thank you very much doctor i mean you made it so i think as far as glaucoma is concerned that six minutes is a, I something it'll always be there so the one question i would want our next yeah yes We have started doing that. Dr. Shanta. I, I believe that it is very important because often in what we consider to be early glaucoma, what we consider to be early glaucoma may have nothing to do with the closeness of the damage to the fovea actually. These are two separate things actually. So the closeness of the glaucomatous damage, initial glaucomatous damage to the fovea is what is very important to detect. And to really get a vivid picture that, you know, we're, we're getting so close to the fovea. That is what should define how we're going to set the target pressure and how we're going to treat the patient. Actually. Is it follow, regular follow-up also every time? Yes, always actually. I would want one question. Thank you very much, Doctor. I would want Dr. Mayuri to answer, ask this, uh, answer this question. Between GPA and OVR overview, which would you rank better and why? GP I prefer to do uh -huh. because it has both event-based event. analysis as well as trend-based analysis. Yes. So yes. it should be used uh, as, a do, as a routine. Yes. And yes. that's why in the first follow-up only, I do two at least two baselines, uh -huh. correct baselines, both for visual field as well as the imaging. And then subsequently, if we can do faster, six fields in two years may be difficult yes. in private practice. But try to get as many as you can. Okay. And ma'am, does it really correlate well with the analysis on the OCT yes, also? Yes, always, yes. always. And as Dr. Nagya said, I have started using 10-2 more often these days, not only the 24-2. But then we have a very yes. narrow yes. database. Sometimes one pick says something is abnormal, but if you go by that finding alone, it may not be so. Because I, I initiate, the, whether the fields or the OCT, the yes. database is too narrow, yes. so and that is not all of them are an Indian population. That's so why it should be repeatable, uh, consistent change. Dr. Vijaya? 
In terms of 10-2, uh, the missions have come out with uh, incorporating that extra 24-2C. The only mm. thing problem is uh, that is available only in the later models. If you are, you cannot use it. You, it won't give meaningful information if you are using it for the follow-up. At least for the new patient, you can start off with that and continue, continue to do that. Oh, thank you, thank you very much, Doctor.